the deadliest snake coming up. Africa's deadliest snake. We're going to go over it. And it's not what you think. Welcome back to Venom Central. <clears throat> I want to give a shout out to my Venom Squad. Thank you guys for the support. We're going to talk about probably one of the deadliest snakes in Africa. The Puff Adder. Nope, it's not the Black Mamba. The Puff Adder. Bitty sorry cans. Now it's a true viper. True viper. And they can get big. And I have a group of them. I've been breeding them for years. Now they can range from different locales. From three foot. The rattlesnakes are breeding again. <laughs> to as big as six foot. And massive body. Now, it's in the Bittis family, so that's your true African viper. It's a big, heavy body, the, the heavyweights of Africa. But the puff adder's extremely crazy cytotoxic venom is responsible for so many deaths. The puff adder's venom not only attacks tissue, it attacks cells. So it kills the cell in the body, and there's no coming back from that. So it's a bad mamma jam. And they get big, and they got a big yield of high venom yield. And that venom is really, really potent. It's the most potent of all the African vipers. They are so prolific. Puff adders, literally, it's been recorded that they can have up to 80 to 90 babies. I had one give birth one time and had 43 babies. They have a bunch of babies. So they're really prolific, and there's a lot of them, and they cover a lot of range. So that makes it alone one of Africa's deadliest snakes. We're going to pull a puff adder out. I'm going to pull off one of my big females. Now, she's not as pretty as my males. My males are golden yellow and black. They're gorgeous. But the males are crazy. I would never be able to get them to sit on this table and stay in one spot and do it safely. They're just, they're psychotic. But this female is a little more placid. Now, mind you, this is about a, she's about four foot. Now, this little cow of puff adder, these are Tanzanians. Now, they don't get as big as some of the other ones. These ones tend to be a little bit smaller. I mean, a five foot Tanzanian puff adder is a big one. But she's getting there, and she's sexually mature now. She's actually, this will be her second year producing. But this snake is responsible for more deaths in Africa than any other snake, even the black mamba. <clears throat> Let me tell you, they can get big. You think gaboons get big? When you see a really big puff adder, you go, oh my God, that is a big freaking snake. I mean, I had a puff adder that weighed 22 pounds one time. I mean, it was it was this big around and it weighed 22 pounds and it was, it was six foot. This one is four years old. Now, I raised this snake. I got it as captive born babies. I bought a group of them. It was this big. It fit in a deli cup. A little orange deli cup. And this is the growth rate in four years. Now, with puff adders, along with all of your bit of stuff, you see my gaboons and all that other stuff. But puff adders, we keep them differently. Now, puff adders enjoy hot. Now, I'll keep my puff adders literally at about 82 degrees, but they get almost a 90 degree hot spot. 88 to 90 degrees. And I keep them dry. I keep them dry, no humidity. This is an arid snake. They like rocky, arid areas. This snake likes it hot, so they do really well hot. And feeding them, these guys are ferocious. Puff adders eat non-stop. They don't have them problems that the boons have. They don't get them respiratory problems. They don't get impacted. They're actually a lot hardier. They make a better captive, but definitely not a pet. But they do really well in captivity. You know, and it's called the puff adder because, of course, they puff. I mean, I call them puffies. That's the slang name between us snake guys. We call them puffies because when they're upset, they puff like a gaboon. You've heard, you've heard my gaboons doing that before if, 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 if you're part of Venom Squad. If you ain't part of Venom Squad, you better get involved. <laughs> but let me tell you, puff adders make a sound just like a gaboon does. It's that loud... <laughs> 
coughing sound, and it's kind of an alarm when they get pissed to let you know, I'm here and I'm not happy. And that's a scary sound when you hear it. Now, this one's not doing it, and I'm glad she's not doing it, because if she was doing it, I'd have her right back in the can, because this snake, the puff adder in general, is known for just explosive strikes without no warning. And so I'm going to back up a little bit. Gaboons, I can read them a little bit. Puff adders, they just pop out of nowhere. They just explode out of nowhere in any position. But they call them puff adders because of the sound they make. That loud puffing that they make. They sound like a damn dragon. It's just a fearless snake. And I'll tell you, a lot of the bites that happen are because these snakes are so prolific. And they're in areas that are really heavily populated. It's... It's responsible for more deaths than any other snake in Africa. And it's, I can't repeat that enough. It's, it, it's literally, this is a dangerous son of a bitch right here. And you wouldn't think so looking at this animal. It looks very placid, but it also has the capabilities to strike like the gaboon does. It can strike in any direction. And it's also known for being one of the fastest striking snakes also. So you would think the black mamba. You'd think, okay, the black mamba is the deadliest snake in Africa. It may be the deadliest snake drop for drop, and the puff adder is the deadliest snake by numbers. He kills more people, so he's a bad boy. The puff adder, what a cool snake, right? And what a dangerous snake. That's the bad one in Africa, the puff adder. Okay, we're going to put this girl back, and I want you to pay attention to how I handle a puff adder. Even though she looks like she's placid, this snake gets the utmost respect. This is not one that you take lightly. I do have African polyvane, in case I get tagged, but this girl gets handled just like the other ones, where I'm going to support her weight. And very gently lift her. But... Now, if you notice, I'm choked up on this hook with her, closer to her head, okay? She, like, normally, I would hook the snake a little bit further back, but this limits her strike range on me. So this way, I can maneuver her and move her around. I've got her weight back here. See, now, how she's reaching on me, I'm going to set her down and grab a little closer. I choke up on puff adders a little bit like this, so they can't pop off of that hook and reach me. I like to keep them close. From the head to the hook, it's a shorter range. On a rattlesnake, I give them a little more range. On a gaboon, I give them a little more range. But puff adders, they get choked up. That's just the way you do a puff adder. That stops that snake from coming anywhere near my hands or anything else, for that matter. But we're going to put this girl back, and we're going to relocate her where she belongs. Okay, guys, just a quick little video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Just a couple little tidbits about puff adders and just how dangerous they are. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Click my logo to subscribe. Don't forget to share. We're trying to grow the channel. And the Venom Squad, jump on it, man. Let's push it. Let's get Venom Central to grow. And come on back because we're going to be doing a lot more stuff. Willie from Venom Central, checking out. Later.